Live Edge Furniture is quite popular here in Northern California area and probably in your area as well. And I'll show a procedure for managing these irregular surfaces of live edges. And so I'm importing a drawing of a plank, a milled piece of live edge that will be used as the seat for a bench. And uh, this is a straight photo um, from the top, as you can see. And what I'm doing right now is creating a style that I like to use when I trace over shapes like this. And I'm, it, it is a red line style with a thicker line dimension so that I can see it on the, on the photo. And the first thing I need to do is to draw a line on the red axis to see if I need to straighten out the picture. And so here's a line that starts at the center on the left end, but it's a little bit off on the right end. So I'll rotate the picture so that that center line is continuous throughout its length. I'll raise it up about this much and that looks pretty good now. The So the, the photo is now straightened but it needs to be sized to full size and I've picked the tape measure tool and measure a distance there. It's not right. I type in the right dimension and resize the the photograph so that it is now the full size. I knew one dimension which was the length of the live edge piece. Now I won't use the full length of this plank and I'm deciding right now where it's going to be cut off. I want to save the thin end and have a 46 inch bench so I've drawn a guideline 46 inches away and so I get rid of the thickest part or the widest part of the plank which I want to do. I don't want that wide end. So that'll come off. And I've got the uh, dimensions there and then of the, of the seat on the plank. The next step is to trace over the live edges. That means using the arc tool and the line tool. I'll start with the arc tool. Now I've only, I've changed the default from 12 to 6 sides. Uh, you might have noticed that I did that. I don't need an arc tool that has 12 sides for this kind of work. So I'm laying out some arcs here that match the edge at the top face of the, of the plank. And that just means connecting these various segments, arc segments. And if there are any there, I just deleted a little piece of length that I don't need. Uh, and then I'll be able to finish up this top edge here uh, with a couple more arcs. Maybe one more here at the end. And so that's, that's the upper edge. Now I need to go back to the bottom, uh, the lower edge here, and define that. In, well, using the same process with the arc tool and line tool and so on. 
thought that would be easy with that one arc, but that's not going to work. It takes a few more. So that defines then the live edge at the top surface, and I'm going to make that a group just so that I manage that whole face uh, separately from what I have to do now is define the lower edge of the of of this live edge and you can just see it it's a little bit dark there but I'll use a line tool to start there and maybe another line you know I'll go to the arc tool and so the process here then is to create two groups, an upper group and a lower group. And, and those groups then have defined the live edge irregular shape. And a few more few more connections here and again I need to do the other side down here same way now you might imagine that it's going to be somewhat difficult then to create the actual surface on the edges of the live edge. But uh, I'll show a way of, of speeding that up. All right. So then there's the, the bottom face is defined as a group and the top face is defined. And I can copy those two faces over to the right and I'd rather rotate it now so that it's like a bench seat and I need to be on the red axis to rotate this 90 degrees and both faces are uh, at, on the same plane, now let me get rid of the parallel projection, go to a perspective view. Now I can separate the top face from the bottom face using the uh, move tool. Drop that down uh, for the thickness, which will be two inches. Well, yeah, the original, the thickness of this live edge is three and an eighth. It's a pretty thick piece of lumber. So now they're separated, the top face from the bottom face, and I want to turn this into a one component, the, the seat. And I'm getting rid of some of the extra lines now. And I've got this sandwich, but I want to turn it into the, a solid here. and I'm going to explode these two groups and then draw the edges, the corners, draw the corners with a line tool and I want to create the face on that irregular live edge. Now I'm using a plug-in, Fredo Curve aloft, 
and I use skin contours to do this and the first thing I do is select the boundary of the live edge selecting those four edges and then skinning letting the program the plug-in actually create all the faces necessary to create that and it turns it into a, a, a separate group and I'll explode that so now I've got a nice face that represents the live edge and I can do that same process on the other edge now get the plug-in Fredo collection curve aloft skin contours click on the four boundary edges validate those by clicking and then it skins and creates that face on the other live edge so I've got a nice bench seat now to uh, to further design the bench the legs and a lower and I want a lower shelf in in the bench so I'll make that a component call it the bench seat and I'm ready to continue with the rest of the design here's an idea so far on I show in the upper right hand corner here uh, a way of using that plank for a bench seat